Today I'm joined by Daniel Sloper from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Canberra. The Australian Government has appointed Daniel as G20 Special Representative to support Australia's G20 Sherpa and conduct outreach on the G20 during Australia's G20 Presidency. Daniel, thank you for your time today. Not at all, it's a pleasure to be here. Can you tell me a bit about your role? Sure. As Special Representative, I'm required on behalf of the G20 as a whole to conduct engagement with non-G20 government members, uh, stakeholders such as NGOs and others, and also regional and international organisations. In doing so, I have to articulate clearly the G20's agenda, listen to the views of others, and see what other ideas there might be, so we can prosecute that at the end of this year through the Leaders' Summit. Of course, I'm not the only one responsible for uh, outreach, if you like. Uh, this is led really by the head of our government, the Prime Minister, who holds the presidency this year for the G20, the Foreign Minister, the Treasurer, the Trade Minister as well, as they each have respective meetings, and the Employment Minister through the year. So through those different means and my own outreach, we hope to listen to others through the year and their views. What does the G20 want to achieve this year? The G20 at the end of the year in November really wants leaders to come together and give a commitment to action, concrete, practical action to lift economic growth and job opportunities globally. Uh, growth projections over the last few years have not been the same they were before the global financial crisis. So what we're looking for now is G20 members to look domestically at what action they can take to complement their collective action to strengthen the global economy in recent years. This won't be easy, it'll be difficult. We've set a quantitative target. Finance ministers in February agreed that we would, over the next five years, try to lift our economic growth above the trajectory forecast by more than 2%. So we're talking about structural reform, something that's never easy, but if we can set those macroeconomic policies, increase investment, look at trade as a driver for growth, look, exchange ideas about employment policies, we set in, we're putting in place the settings to allow that growth to occur. What effect does the G20's actions have on the global economy? Perhaps I'll answer that by first noting some characteristics about the G20. This is an organisation that represents 85% of global GDP, approximately 75% of trade, 65% uh, of the world's population, major source of foreign direct investment. So clearly, when leaders come together and achieve consensus, they can drive change and have an impact, on the, a positive impact on the global economy. Uh, we saw this in response to the global financial crisis. Now we're looking ahead and trying to achieve sustained, balanced growth. As I said before, that refers to domestic action, but it needs to go beyond that and consider about what impact our policy agenda has on others. So we also do work, for example, on the development agenda, where we're trying to look for coherence and to assist emerging economies attract private investment, uh, improve their taxation regimes, uh, have access to formal financial services, and continuing good work on food security and human resource development. Daniel, thank you for your time today. Not at all, thank you.